Hi, this is Bob. Yesterday I made a uh, little video for YouTube on the uh, crystal filter adapter for the BC348 with the three crystal filters in it. Uh, 2.1 kilohertz, 400 hertz, and 200 hertz. And I decided it would be a good idea to show how this works on the air, how nice this works. So uh, I hooked it back up and uh, all that's needed to connect it is uh, connect it to the 12 volts uh, DC and then uh, to connect the uh, 915 kilohertz IF which comes out of this F connector right here. This little cable here goes around to the back of this where you find another F connector. That's all there is to it. And <clears throat> when I built this thing I had uh, reservations about it. I, uh, I really didn't think it would be much of an improvement uh, over the BC 453 Q5, which I have up here, which I can tune into the, uh, to the IF of the BC 348. Now that also requires a converter. That converter is up here. It's a one tube converter, converts to 915 kilohertz IF to 550 kilohertz for the BC 453. Now the BC 453 is an improvement and I used it for I don't know two or three years but I found that when I built this thing that it really really is amazing how well it works. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I do have to admit that when I built this I built it reluctantly because I did not think it would be that much of an improvement. Uh, I thought that it was a big huge project that was going to end in failure actually. But I built it and I worked at it and if you notice the circuit boards uh, in the uh, uh, first video on this unit, uh, the amount of solder and things that are on those boards and uh, all that, it, that's because I had built so many different versions of the oscillators and the mixers and all that on that circuit board. And when you do that sort of thing you're going to get a lot of solder and stuff all around and it's not very pretty, I admit. But it works so nice. I, I, I w I'm not going to take it all apart and build it over again just to make it look pretty because I'm afraid it might not work. At least not as good as it does. So what I've done is I've uh, left it like that and it's not very pretty but I really like the way it works and it's been reliable now. I built this in uh, April, I think it was like April 26th of 2021 and uh, it has worked flawlessly since then. Now right now it's off of course so let's turn it on and I've got it on the medium filter there which is 400 Hertz so let's tune in the station on 40 meters Now that's the 400 hertz uh, filter. Here's the wide filter. Now here you hear two stations coming in. I'm going to the medium, this is the wide filter, 2.1. I'm going to the medium filter, which is 400 hertz. There we're back on the wide filter again, 2.1, 400 hertz. Now listen to the 200. And the BC348 is very stable, stays right there, really nice. And.
This is the AF gain. So, uh, it just works beautifully and I was amazed when I put this thing on and how well it works. And I want to show you how nice it is to uh, zero beta station. Uh, I've got it on that frequency that I had that station tuned in that was calling CQ there. So say I wanted to zero beat in on him. Here is my uh, homebrew uh, Heterodyne VFO. I'll put it on spot. And there's the frequency right there. And we're zero beaded. Uh, here's the thing, this is only 200 hertz wide. So you put it on 200 hertz and you tune in a station like that. Now watch the dial here. Watch the knob. See how narrow that is? That's only 200 hertz wide and the knob just moves just uh, less than a half an inch. And uh, then And there we are, there we are zero beaded. Since this is only 200 hertz wide filter, you get it in there and you get the VFO so it's coming in on the 200 hertz wide filter and you have to be within 200 hertz of the guy that uh, is transmitting, that you're listening to. So uh, zero beating is just so easy then to do that with the 348. I used to spend a lot of time zero beating and I missed a lot of contacts because of that. So what else can I say? I know uh, the only thing I can think about that that kind of bothers me about this construction of this unit is the fact that I had built so many circuits and things on that uh, on that uh, printed circuit board in there that uh, that it looks pretty bad but Hey, this thing works so good, I'm not going to get in there and start messing with it now. And uh, something interesting, too, uh, if you wonder why they call them printed circuit boards, when they first developed that type of a circuit board way back years and years ago, uh, they thought that they would be running them off on a printing press or printing them with some kind of a laser printer or an inkjet printer something like that. They would be printing the circuit boards, printing the circuits, which is not the case. Uh, they do it by etching copper off of the uh, circuit board. Uh, anyways, uh, it's interesting to note that we still have that name printed circuit board that we still use when we describe them. And uh, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like uh, pineapples from uh, from Hawaii. They, they were originally called pineapples because some people thought way back in the 1800s when they first started coming from Hawaii that they were growing on pine trees up north somewhere so they called them pineapples and it was a uh, it was a rumor that spread all over the country about pineapples and uh, is a term that we still use today we know exactly what we're talking about when we say a pineapple. <laughs> but it surely does not grow on a pine tree. It's amazing sometimes how these uh, rumors get started and the language gets uh, shaped around that rumor and becomes uh, something that we use over and over and over again. And we really don't think about the origins of the term.
such as printed circuit board. Anyhow, that's it guys. I just wanted to show you how nice this thing worked, so that's my little demonstration. Uh, 73s and good DX.